Hello and welcome to my review of the Warhammer Age of Sigmar Warcry Fomoroid Crusher. He's basically a Cyclops. This model or monster will cost you £25 and I think that's about right for these monster size creatures. You can use him in your Age of Sigmar battles. He's part of the Slaves to Darkness army and I'll be going through the rules for him towards the end of the video. Uh, but firstly, let's have a look at uh, him, his details, spare parts, size comparisons, then we'll go on to the rules. So he comes in this wonderful little box, this little monster box, and it looks like uh, this is gonna be the preferred method of these monsters. The Mindstealer Spherax, which is also 25 pounds, that comes in the same size box, but the Ogroid Myrmidon, which is the same price, comes in a slightly thinner box, as you can see, but there we go. I hope uh, all these monsters continue to come in these little bite-sized boxes. I think they're pretty cool. And I much prefer them to the plastic clamshell packs. The other thing that you get in the box is this little instruction booklet. Only a few pages, you'll have him built within about 20 minutes or so, if that, uh, if you're careful with the mold lines and things. Uh, you have uh, various options for his arm. So you have two options for the right arm and two options for the left arm. You can even swap them. So you could have the uh, piece of masonry in the right arm or the, the rock. And again, with the left arm, you could have this piece of masonry uh, or the rock as well. So you could have the rock and the masonry or the masonry and the rock or both masonry or both rocks if that makes sense. So there's multiple um, variations of this. And then on top of that, uh, you've got a different head on there. Um, we'll have a look at the spare parts in a moment, um, but you have a, uh, something to cover his eye, which is called an armored flange. Sounds very good. Um, what I would say is I wish that they had the Slaves of Darkness rules in here. Uh, you know, just an extra sheet of paper. Um, that would be really cool and again somewhere on the box just to say you know slaves to darkness or alternatively um, can be used for slaves to darkness because it's not that much of a uh, an effort to put something extra on the box or, or in the box I wouldn't have thought they do that with the uh, chaos demons you know they say oh we can it says age of sigma on the box and then warhammer 40,000 so I would like um both games uh, represented and not just uh, Warcry. However, uh, you do get the abilities on a nice big card uh, for Warcry and a lovely uh, little picture of him. And you do get uh, a little combat card um, for the rules for Warcry 2. Uh, so, you know, he isn't without extras, but I just would prefer these monsters to have uh, something for the core game as well. Okay, let's have a look at the detail of the Fomoroid Crusher, or Hemorrhoid Crusher, <laughs> as I like to call him. Uh, so, lots of detail on this model. I love this Cyclops eye, very God of War-esque. If you played God of War, any of the older ones as well, uh, even God of War 3, the, uh, you know, updated HD version and things, um, you'll know that there are these kind of beasts and minotaurs and... Um, Medusas and all kinds of things. If they had some kind of Kratos type model, I'd be all over that because you sort of do have a few Medusas in the Age of Sigmar if you look closely enough. And obviously we've got a Cyclops and we've now got Minotaur type creatures as well. Um, so, you know, you can make a little, you know, God of War themed uh, miniature collection or, or diorama with uh, some Games Workshop's models now, um, which I'm a big fan of. Anyway, moving back to the model, uh, there are a few skulls there hanging from the right side of his uh, waist, even some that are helmeted, heads that are helmeted. You've got a little chaos symbol there. You, you've got a fair bit of detail on his skin, you know, some pits and some um, spots and things. Uh, yeah, a, little, a few spots there. Not nice detail on his toes. He's got the, the uh, toenails and... Uh, yeah, he's got these chains on his feet, like he's kind of been broken broken out from somewhere, maybe. 
Uh, again, some more heads and skulls dangling from, from him. Uh, lots of lovely articulation on the hand and uh, on that hand. Yeah, lovely big mane and a large uh, shoulder pauldron. That's optional, I guess. I mean, you know, it was quite raised, uh, his shoulder, but it's not like there's big, big cutouts there or um, plugs that you that you can attach the shoulder pauldron on. So even that is optional in a way. You don't have to put that big shoulder pauldron on. So you could have another one that doesn't have that armor. Or possibly I've done this the wrong way around. I've given him armor and, you know, haven't given him an armored flange. Uh, anyway, loads of detail here. Stitches on the uh, van braces, I want to call them, and uh, the masonry as well with some chains on there, lovely chaos symbol. So I don't know what he's doing, um, you know, breaking up chaos uh, masonry, but in the rules, he can just pick up scenery that's nearby and hurl it at uh, pointy elves. That's what I'd probably be using him against. Anyway, that is the Fomeroid Crusher. Let's have a look at these special, let's have a look at these spare parts then. So here we go. Let's look at this uh, spare head to begin with. So this one, you can see his teeth, you know, clearly uses mouthwash or something. Um, you've got the armored flange there. Would have been nice if that was detachable maybe as a separate piece, that would have been cool. Um, but there we go. Here are the uh, different hands. So this one's holding the boulder. So I think uh, this attaches somehow like so, uh, if I've put that in right, there you go. So it's, yeah, I mean, it just doesn't look as kind of joined up as, you know, the other masonry piece. And that's one of the reasons why I chose, chose that uh, big um, pillar. And then this one is literally just like a rock. So, yeah, I wanted the other masonry piece too. Um, if I get a second one, which is probably likely, uh, I'll just do them with the rocks, I guess, and with a different uh, head, and maybe just void the um, shoulder pauldron. But um, this model, you know, apart from the head and the and the two arm options, is going to look similar to a second one, unlike the Spheranx, because the Spheranx is facing another direction. Um, and also it's a completely different head. This is the same head, but just with the armored flange and the, and the mouth is, um, you know, slightly closed. But uh, I'm, I mean, in terms of the horns and the hair style and, and all the rest of it. Anyway, they're the spare parts. Let's have a look at the size comparisons. So I don't, I haven't yet built the Monsieur Spheranx, uh, but I will very soon. And in that review, uh, you'll see the size comparison between uh, this guy and the Spheranx. So if you wanna see that, um, go check that video out, uh, which will be up very shortly. But I do have the Ogroid Myrmidon, and the Ogroid Myrmidon I thought was quite a bit of a beast. You know, it's quite big. But the Fomeroid Crusher is huge. Let's not forget, you know, they're both the same price. Uh, the Og Ogroid Myrmidon comes in uh, just I think it's still in two sprues though, but it comes in a thinner box, but the Fomeroy Crusher is a big boy. Look how big he is. He's easily head and shoulders. He's got so much bulk compared. I mean, look at those shoulder muscles, those rippling biceps. This Cyclops has been working out. Um, you know, no doubt the Myrmidon is probably the better fighter, but sheer brute strength and maybe toughness even, uh, the Crusher probably has it. Um, so yeah, I wanted to just show you the, the big size comparison there, you know, how big the Crusher is compared to the Myrmidon. Uh, let me show you some size comparisons with uh, some typical uh, models. So I've got a Chaos Knight here, and he is taller than a Chaos Knight. You could definitely batter one of these guys off a, uh, a horse, a steed, um, definitely one of those pointy elves um, that would smack the smirk off their faces wouldn't it that's that's agree guys and then the uh, even the carcadrac um you know the chaos lord and the carcadrac is just 
I think the crusher is a little bit taller headwise, you know, where this hair is, but of course the Lord has got this ax, which then tips him to the post. Uh, but yeah, you know, he, he definitely is, is similar height and he's just walking about. Uh, you've got a Chaos Warrior here. Yeah, dwarfs him. And then we've got a Spire Tyrant, uh, you know, Gladiator. Uh, yeah, even smaller still. Let me show you some 40K um, size comparisons, because I'd say this is mainly a 40K channel. We've got a Primaris on the right and a uh, normal Space Marine on the left. Can you believe that he is taller than a Primaris? I can't believe it. Um, but there you go. Compared to a Space Marine. And then the Primaris, yeah, probably goes up to his belly. So this is a big model you're getting for 25 pound. Pretty big model. And as you can see, plenty of detail there. Uh, it would be great in a diorama, I'm sure. Um, lots of character this model brings. Okay, this is my part of the review where I will go through all of the Fomeroid Crusher's rules. Of course, uh, you've got the little ability card with the uh, for Warcry, and I'll just read these uh, abilities out. You've got uh, double hurl masonry. A fighter can use this ability only if they are within one inch of an obstacle. Pick an enemy fighter within eight inches of this fighter and roll a dice. On a three to four, allocate one damage point to that fighter. On a five to six, allocate a number of damage points to that fighter equal to the value of this ability. Triple rampaging charge. Until the end of this fighter's activation, the next time this fighter finishes a move action within one inch of an enemy fighter, pick one visible enemy fighter within one inch of this fighter. Allocate a number of damage points to that fighter equal to the value of this ability. And finally, quad, bloody trophy. A fighter can use this ability only if an enemy fighter has been taken down by an attack action made by them this activation. The player the player controlling this fighter immediately gains one wild dice that can be used in the hero phase of the next battle round. So there you go, that's all the abilities for Warcry. Uh, you'll find the rules uh, for the Fomeroid Crusher in the brand new Slaves to Darkness Chaos Battle Tome or through the Age of Sigmar app, which I strongly suggest you download, even if it's just to um, look at a few of the models. I wish the pictures were bigger though. Uh, that's one of the things I'm taking away from this. I wish I wish there was a bit more of a gallery in, in that app. Um, alternatively, you can just go on Games Workshop's website and find the rules for free there. So, uh, you'll find the Fomeroid Crusher. It's actually the last unit in the book, if you don't count the endless spells. The minimum size is one and the maximum size is one, and he will cost you 100 points, uh, which is the same amount of points as the Mind Stealer Spheranx. Uh, but cheaper than the 140 points Ogroid Myrmidon. So what do you get? Well, you get a movement of six inches, uh, 10 wounds, five plus save, and bravery 10. It's the same as the Minesia Sphyranx, except the Minesia Sphyranx is quicker. That monster has a 10 inch move. And the Ogroid Myrmidon is the same movement speed, has two less wounds at eight, a better save at four plus, and a worse bravery at eight as well. A Farmeroid Crusher is a single model armed with crushing fists and Hurl Terrain. So Hurl Terrain is a missile weapon, it's a range 12 inch, it's two attacks, three plus to hit, three plus to wound, minus one rend and two damage. That's very, very strong. You know, you only need a three plus to hit and you get two attacks. It's a bit short range at 12 inches, but there we go. Crushing Fists is a one inch range, of course. Uh, four attacks though. 3 plus to hit, 3 plus to wound, no rend, but damage 2. So it's nice that it's damage 2, and it's nice that you get 4 attacks. Now abilities. These are pretty good abilities. Rampage. After this model makes a charge move, you can pick one enemy unit within 1 inch of this model and roll a number of dice equal to the charge roll for that charge move. For each 6, that unit suffers 1 mortal wound. Brilliant. So you're stacking up those mortal wounds as well. Insurmountable strength. In your hero phase, pick one terrain feature within six inches of this model and roll a dice for each other unit within six inches of that terrain feature. On a three plus, that unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. That's pretty good, but it's dependent on a terrain feature within six inches of him and six inches of another unit. And the other unit has to be within six inches of that terrain feature too. So that's a bit more dependent um, than, compared to the Rampage, but still pretty decent. Nice little bonus on top of that. 
Uh, keywords is Chaos, Mortal, Monster, Slave to Darkness, and Fomoroid Crusher. So very, very decent model. You know, he's got that, that missile weapon, uh, which uh, Monsters Pharynx doesn't have. Uh, he's a bit slower, um, but he's got a decent missile weapon and uh, decent four attacks in combat um, because they do the damage two, unlike the Spheranx, which do damage one, has less attacks, but the Spheranx's uh, attacks do rend at minus one. But it's nice to have that missile weapon and the, the melee weapon too. I'd just be walking him up the board. If you can get him near terrain features, that would be brilliant because uh, units suffering, you know, up to three mortal wounds on a three plus is uh, very, very good. So he's a bit of a tank. They've got a lovely profile and such a beautiful model as well, if I can say that for a, a Cyclops. <laughs> anyway, what do you guys think of the model and all the rules? Please do put it in the comments below. It'd be great to hear from you. Thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching. Death to the False Emperor.